Thank you. John Perry, would you agree with that recommendation? <laughs> um, gosh, I, I am, first of all, may I say I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Uh, a little surprised uh, given the other members of the panel because I don't think I'm from the same planet, actually. Uh, and uh, I, I, I am honored also to be here given the fact that I may be one of very few people in this room who actually makes his living personally by creating what these gentlemen are pleased to call intellectual property. I don't regard my expression as being a form of property. Property is something that can be taken from me. If I don't have it, somebody else does. And expression is not like that. And furthermore, the notion that expression is like that is an entirely the consequence of, an, of a, a system of taking expression and transporting it around that was necessary before there was the internet, which has the capacity to do this infinitely at almost no cost. And the, the very notion of content assumes the presence of a container that actually no longer exists. And if what we're really talking about is incentivizing creativity by people who create things and not large institutions who prey on them and have for years, uh, then we're talking about a different discussion. And I think we're also having to engage a discussion with regard to what is considered to be ethical or moral behavior on the internet. What we're talking about here and what this entire conference so far has been about in many respects has been about imposing the standards of some business practices and institutional power centers that come from another era on the future, whether they are actually productive of new ideas or not. And I must respectfully disagree with the minister that there is some kind of an agreement over the necessity of having both intellectual property law and increasingly draconian methods for imposing it on the internet. Because This is a different audience than I thought it was. Uh, well, in the I, back I, seats. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess, exactly. <laughs> um, let, me, let me just cut to the chase. I don't want to give an oration here, and I'm tempted to, and I, and I want to be respectful of our time. But in the process of trying to impose these old orders and preserve this old business model, and not actually recognize the relationship of creation with the audience and how that is best monetized in the future. What we are doing is doing things that functionally break the net increasingly. When Eric Schmidt sits here and talks blandly about how great it would be to have uh, bots that go around and find intellectual property on the net and automatically toss it off. That breaks the net fundamentally and will. And many of the things that are being said here and, and proposed and have been done refuse to recognize that the net is one continuous thing and that if you can control any aspect of it, you can control all of it. You start out with intellectual property and you end up with expression you don't like. It's as simple as that. You cannot own free speech. And the effort, and the effort to do so is going to be highly inimical to a promise that I want to close with here, which is that for the first time in human history, it is possible 
to convey eventually to every human being the right to know, the right to be able to satisfy his or her curiosity to the fullest possible extent, no matter where he or she is, and the right to express him or herself and have the entire human race here if it chooses to. This is a very important legacy to give to our children, and if we are going to deny them that legacy on the basis of trying to preserve some institutions that may have outlived their usefulness, we will not be good ancestors. It seems that Pascal Ned just said, uh, controlling the distributors might not be controlling the people on the internet, no? Uh, gosh. <laughs> you can say gosh to me. Okay? Uh, I, I, you know, again, I, I, I am kind of overwhelmed. Uh, first of all, I, I, I must say, if, if you're spending five billion dollars on new artists, we're not getting our money's worth. Uh, second, that's an easy one. Th Three thousand billion dollar economy. I, the last time I checked in the United States, the, the record industry was, at a, was hovering at about $9 billion or 10. Je parlais de l'industrie de la création. Excusez-moi, oh, je parlais de uh, tout le I was referring to the whole of the creation industries, not just music, the whole of the creation industries. Industries, I mean, as a creator, I'm, I'm a little baffled by what you mean as the creation industries. Uh, what, what are the creation industries of which you speak? Il s'agit du 3000 billion il dollars de value. Il s'agit de la musique. I'm talking about music, cinema, radio. It does not add up to that kind of money. In fact, it doesn't add up to enough money, frankly, for us to be considering changing the way in which the entire internet is structured in the future in order to protect a business of that size. It is nowhere near that size. It is, I would be very surprised if what you call the creation industry amounts to as much as $100 billion worldwide. I would be very surprised. And, and I'm, you know, that does not include the amount of value that is being generally given and received by people who are, are being well paid, as we were, the Grateful Dead, without using intellectual property as the means of mediating our relationship. We gave away our so-called intellectual property and became the most popular band, performing band in the United States, and we're making one hell of a lot of money giving it away. It was not required that we be absolutely firm in our hold on this material because we recognize something important, which is that in an information economy, the normal sense of an economy based on scarcity is turned on its head. Value in an information economy is based on familiarity and attention. These are very different principles. And, and trying to optimize towards scarcity, as you are by all of your methods, is not going to be in the benefit of creation, I, I promise you. Now, there are, I, I, want to, I want to address Jim's point really quickly, because I think the film industry is actually an, is, is an important point. I think the film industry does deserve and require a great deal of money to do what it does. Uh, I, I don't think that there is any evidence that the record industry does. So you agree? I, Both I, of you. No, no. no I, but, we had a violent agreement backstage, yeah, and, and, which will continue on some issues. Uh, but I don't think that it's intellect. Not that it's not intellectual property enforcement any more than it was with the Grateful Dead <laughs> that gets you guys properly paid. People actually want to take your products and pay for them at a reasonable rate. They want to go to movie theaters and see your products. They they are actually not terribly interested in sitting there for 11 hours while, while BitTorrent finally downloads one of your movies when they can sit there in Netflix and, and stream it well, right away. I mean, called, it, those people are called our customers, 
The others, frankly, aren't. And it is an extraordinary but, number of people that do act, you, you, you know, uh, but, uh, access but, illegal but content. They, you know, I don't think that you're going broke, though. You're making plenty Do we have to wait until we do? No, no, no. I'm not suggesting that you do, and I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't get properly compensated for what you're doing. I'm just saying that you are doing a good job of making some extremely expensive movies, and it, it still seems to be something that you do at a profit. And, that, and it's not because of intellectual property uh, uh, laws or, or restrictions. It's because people are willing to pay you for your product in the same way that they were willing to pay us for ours. Uh, we didn't make them pay it. Uh, I, am not, I am not against being compensated for what you do. There are more musicians who don't have day jobs now than at any time in history. And the reason for that is not intellectual property enforcement, it's the internet.